the last thing I expected was a lapel mic today, but never mind. Good afternoon to everybody here. I know I'm the session before lunch, so you must all be like, you know, woman, get on with it and then let us go and eat. So I'll try and keep it as interesting as possible. He's given me this major intro. I was supposed to be saying that as part of my family lineage, but he's done half my job for me about telling me whose granddaughter I am, whose daughter I am, and what I do. Well, that should help me start, because I'm here to speak about my journey, my career, <clears throat> what I think my life is meant to be, at least what I'm trying to think my life is all about. And the way I look at India, and the way I would like to take India forward, considering that I'm in the business of school education, you must all be wondering, what is this school, school teacher doing here in the midst of college kids? But how many of you here can vouch for the fact that, although you're all in college right now, vouch for the fact that school life was awesome and fantastic? Well, that's why I'm here. Because I believe that 15 years of our lives we spend going to the same place, at least most of us, going to the same place, growing up with the same kind of people, interacting with the same adults, same kids. And then all of a sudden, one fine day, we go into four years of college, and we suddenly think we are mature. You think that happens? No. Definitely not. Maturity does not come just in those four years of undergrad, or two and a half years of postgrad, or two years of PG diploma, or whatever you call it. It happens in these 15 years. There is a paramari that says, Exactly. So I believe in that very, very, very strongly, which is why <clears throat> I come from a family of educationists, an artist. Yes, my grandmother runs one of the most premier institutions here in Chennai. Okay. Is that alumni clapping? Yeah. Thought as much. But uh, I didn't set that up, okay, for the rest of you. <laughs> Anyways, so, yes, and my father is an actor, theater actor, film actor. My uncle happens to be Mr. Rajnikanth, so... <laughs> I know for sure I didn't set that up. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's been a great combination of education and entertainment. So I decided, let me do both. So I learned Bharatanatyam, like he said, I'm a dancer. I've learned Bharatanatyam from Dr. Padma Subramaniam. And I sing, I act with my dad, yes. But my passion somehow ended up getting into the field of education. And trust me, it was not pre-planned. The minute I was born, my grandmother didn't look at me and say, this girl is going to run a school like me. No. In fact, my first dream when I was five years old was that I want to become an astronaut. Can you believe that? Even I can't today. When I look, my, look at myself in the mirror and I think I can't believe I wanted to be an astronaut. But yeah, that's what I wanted to be initially. And then school happened. I studied, of course. I am an alumni of Padma Seshadri as well. I studied there. There's nothing to woo about it here. It's normal. <laughs> Party school. <laughs> Party school. Le peti padi kala na yar gini pig. So, anyway, outside of that, we. I hope you don't mind me mixing Tamil and English when I talk. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. Because I am not a person who strictly adheres to one language when I speak. And uh, after which, I did my college at Loyola. I did my BSc in Visual Communication. That's where I met my husband. And uh, three years down the line, I don't know whether I got my degree or not, I got married. <laughs> okay. And uh, <clears throat> my husband also comes from a very, very nice lineage. Why I'm saying all this is because I'm supposed to talk about my lineage and my life story, so I'm giving you the entire background. My husband happens to be the grandson of Jemni Ganeshan and Savitri. So. It's all, it's all in the game of entertainment, cinema, and education. I don't have a choice. So then I worked in Padma Seshadri for a while. I don't know how many of you were around when I was teaching dance there. Whoops, there. So 
I'm glad it was just one who <laughs> lifted his hand up. And uh, you're glad too, I know. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I was training there in the nursery, but I was not happy. I know it's my grandmother's school. I think my thing, okay, just give me a second. I know it's my grandmother's school. I know she, the ideals, ideals with which she started it, and I know what all went through by the time she put it together because she started it as an answer. Let me now proud, I mean, openly say to Don Bosco because. When she started Padma Shadri, she was very upset that once when my father went there, it's a small incident, my father wanted to celebrate Vinayaka Chaturthi, so, but he doesn't get a holiday in Don Bosco. So he took this idol of Pulayar and he did puja in the classroom. Now before he could finish the puja, somebody alerted the principal and he came charging down the corridor. So my dad in his earnest uh, wish to you know, hide the whole thing, took the Pulayar and kept it outside the window sill and went and went back and sat as though nothing happened. But it is so unfortunate that that Pulayar was kept on top of Mother Mary's statue. <laughs> I am not cooking this one up, it really happened. So he was suspended for about a month or two from school, rightfully so from their point of view. So my grandmother was very agitated and aggravated and she said, why isn't there a school that teaches Hindu values? Hindu philosophy, Hindu culture, Hindu tradition. So that's how Padma Sishadri evolved, but my father never shifted. Huh? He continued to study in Don Bosco and he was a state topper at the end of it. So that's what happened with regards my, my father and my grandmother. But when I worked in Padma Seshadri, I figured that something was missing. I found that kids were just being made to study and pushed towards either taking up engineering or taking up computer science or getting packed off to United States of America. And I wasn't comfortable with it. This is my point of view. I'm sure there are many of you who don't agree, but this was my point of view, my opinion. And I wasn't very happy about sticking in that kind of an atmosphere and working. So, and also another major reason why I started my own school was also because I felt that my grandmother had worked so hard to put together this school, which was named after some Padma Seshadri. It was not, there was nothing in the field of education in her name. So I felt as a granddaughter, why don't I do that? Because in 50 years of Padma Seshadri's career and over so many students passing out, there has not been a single student who started another school. I'm still the only one. So we, I don't want you to clap for it, thank you. So it's a very sad thing, so please don't clap about it. And uh, at the end of it, I decided, let me start a school in her name, gift it to her for her 80th birthday. And that is how Caliber and Mrs. YGP school evolved. And uh, <clears throat> what I ended up doing in Caliber was that I ended up first removing this concept called classrooms. So we don't have classrooms in Caliber. We only have learning stations or labs where children move from room to room to study the respective subjects. So whether it is a two and a half year old or a 13 and a half year old, they have to move from room to room which means technically I have to create more spaces because I can't pack them all like sardines in one class and say 1A, 2A, 2B, 3B and that's it. It can't happen because I have to create different kinds of labs for the different levels of education. So the nursery has to be a different setup, primary has to be a different setup, middle school has to be a different setup and high school when we move on. So that was a task and in four and a half years we have moved from pre-KG to ninth grade. So it means it's four different kinds of labs for each of the subjects. That was the first thing. The second thing was we did away with notebooks and textbooks. It is all worksheet oriented learning. They have guidebooks that they can refer to. It's a lot like college, I guess. But we decided we would do that because then it gives scope for the teacher as well as the student to widen their horizon and not think, okay, there is this, this one textbook I have to study for for this year and it's over and done with. How many of us remember half the things we studied in school? I don't. I don't remember anything of what I studied in math in school. Purely because it was just that textbook I had to mark those sums that I had to do and it was over and done with. So we did away with textbooks and notebooks and we also have a teacher-student ratio of 1 is to 12. 
because we don't take on more than 25 to 30 children per batch. And at any given point in time, we have two facilitators handling the class. One is a subject specialist, so she is the lab instructor. She handles the entire gamut, pre-kindergarten to ninth grade. If there are kids coming in <clears throat> for pre, L, and U, there is one subject specialist who handles their classes. The other is the batch instructor who moves with each of the batches. She knows the batch inside out. So they do team teaching. So at any given point in time, your teacher-student ratio on an average is about 1 is to 12. So that is what we do. We also have what is called ICT, the interactive touchscreen smart boards. We are the only school in Chennai that has it even for the pre-kindergarten level. We don't, you might find it in the higher secondary and in colleges, yes, but we allow our two and a half year olds to use that because what is taught in the main subjects is reinforced in the ICT lab. We also don't give them homework on paper or notebooks. Homework gets uploaded onto the website. They have to finish it, download it, or submit it online. That's their choice. We had it from fourth upwards last year. This year, we're in introducing it first grade upwards. So these are things we are doing in Calibre. We also have a partnership with a school in the UK. Why did I choose the UK? Simple reason, let's try and celebrate similarities and differences. I didn't come, the bubble didn't burst. So that's how we started a partnership with the school in the UK. From day one of Calibre's existence, we've had a partnership with Edward Richardson High in the UK. And we realized the amount of differences we were learning to celebrate. And then the British Council came up and said, why don't you become part of our global school program? Because you already have the partnership in place. So they're very good. Paisa Taringla, fun, fantastic, ready. We'll use your money to do the right things. So that's another thing we set up together. This was all done before the school started. As of now, what we introduced in Calibre, because we believe in doing different things, and just putting everything in a nutshell, we believe in doing different things every year. As of last year, we introduced robotics as part of the kin school curriculum, not as a separate club or a separate course wherein you get a certificate at the end of 10 months, but it's part of the regular math and science curriculum of the school from grade one onwards. And we also teach the children music, Again, you find in most schools, sixth standard, music, music dance. That's the interest in the elective club, cultural academy. How many of you PSBBNs remember cultural academy? Ah, there I see one girl putting her hand up. Thank you. So only in those ways are, is dance or music taught. But we made sure that we've made it compulsory post sixth grade also. And we've tied up with Brahadwani and we do something called music unit where in end of it, if they want to end up becoming musicians, we do give them the tie-ups with the Trinity College of Music so they can pursue their career in music or dance at the end of it. So it's not just engineering or IT or medicine that they have to worry about. At least I don't believe in that. Why am I saying all this? Purely because what I see today is this rat race because of which I am very upset. This is my personal opinion. So please, if you, are, if you have differences of opinion, you are most welcome to have them. I am giving you my personal opinion that I believe that this rat race of training children, training them like becoming factory products to go study abroad, work abroad, or maapra paakano na paya America larka, and the maapra paakano na and the ponnu ko paratha na tenthirin jirko na oralu ke. Ena anga poyi vaka den summa ellam oru patti koyin engle dance kathu kudukala. Things like this put me off. So I strongly believe that. This, yes, if you're interested in engineering like Amir Khan was in Three Idiots, then it's worth doing what you're doing. But if you're not, and you're going to be forced to into it because you think it's a career that's going to pay you well and it's stable, not happening. Because in today's world, you find that alternate streams of education, I feel sad that I have to even call it alternate streams of education, seem to be coming up in a very, very big way. You're looking at the number of youngsters who've taken to music to dance, to sport, to cinema, to theater. In Tamil theater, we are seeing so many youngsters coming up. And I'm not joking when I say it, because they seem to understand that if you do what your passion is, and if you like what you're doing, success or money is but a byproduct. 
it is not that you have to do what your parents my my grandmother wanted me to join iit i'm telling you openly iit get married to a silicon valley engineer and move abroad none of it i did i went to viscom i fell in love with gemini ganesh and savitri's grandson got married and we started a school today she is very happy but she was very upset at one point in time because her first son did a btech mba and then ended up becoming one kutadi so she was like what the hell is going on with my family i run a school and nobody from my school wants to do engineering or become a doctor but then today she is a more content woman because she has understood i know it sounds funny it might sound funny to you at this age but trust me when you grow up a little more and you start having children you'll understand what i'm talking about believe me i do i have a 7 year old and already i have decided appa nee enna pandreyo panniko vela gagad satyama solren so that is that is the mindset of today's kids you cannot play the fool with them you cannot try to tell them things if you are not up to date with what you want to tell them they will finish you off they will rip you apart and they will tear you to shreds and you will not know what hit you a 3 year old can do it today they are so aware they are not like what we were at least not like what i was in school no nammalukala school la teacher solradhu periya vishayam innikku the child has the ability to focus and question the teacher right not argue not try to prove a point but ask a very valid question and if you don't know the answer you're the loser buddy not the kid so this is what we are trying i mean trying to train in our children which is why we have these kind of systems in our school in place because we want them to do a lot of application oriented learning and we don't want them to just become bookworms and just end up you know end of it what were the problems i faced i'm still facing koyandengala kuda mold pannidala and the petrorgal nu or category irukku parunga very 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 difficult because our parents do not understand enna ga neenga notebook e illa ingringa textbook e illa ingringa enna ga padikranga inga school la unga school la pasanga vande ayyo lab ah ayyo classroom section kedaada ayyo enna ga solreenga எப்படிங்க படிப்பாங்க என்னங்க இது புக்கே நீங்க வீட்டுக்கு அனுப்ப மாட்டேங்கறீங்க these are all queries என்னங்க ஹோம் வொர்க் டவுன்லோட்னா என்னங்க உங்களுக்கு கம்ப்யூட்டர்னால என்ன தெரியாது ஆனா போன வாரம் நான் இமெயில் அனுப்பிச்சேன் எங்க ஃபேமிலிக்கு யுஎஸ்ஏ ல so you know this is the mindset i am not i am not trying to do some comedy here honest to god this is the mindset now this is a mold that the parents are able to understand the minute you people come to college college la assignment research work computer as file folder worksheet na puriyud school la sonna no 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 40 page notebook enga yen en pullaik and notebook illa that seems to be the problem so this is a mindset i am fighting every day to break and change but unless i am the change i want to be I cannot talk about a global India. I will finish in exactly a minute if that's why you're coming up. Okay. <laughs> But I want to be the change. So what do I do? I always listen to Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. You start looking at the man in the mirror and then you decide that if this is what I want to do, I live by example. Be the change you want to see. I live by example. I can hone the talents of the children in my school at least to start with and i'll be happier if more schools take it up and do it the way we are doing it so that you hone their talents and make them grow in their assess them for who they are not in comparison to 30 others in the classroom and you see the kind of change you want them to be because in today's world you cannot just say you're a citizen of india you are a citizen of the globe and the faster we understand that and round and wholesomely develop our children into getting there adukapra everything is set so i don't have to that is why i believe in catching them young i am probably like the child catcher in chitti chitti bang bang but i catch them young and i want them to grow in this particular way so 15 years from now when they are in college like all of you or when they move on to other things they want to do in life they are already ready it's not a sudden thrust and then they don't feel tense and they don't commit suicides thank you very much